Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Modded Career with me, Oofal Spoofal. And today's episode is going to be a very, very special one indeed because it's time for our two brave Kerbonauts, Jebediah and Bill Kerman, to go where no Kerbal has ever gone before in this space agency. And of course, we are talking about the surface of the Mun. Now the launch vehicle that we are using to take our two Kerbals to the Mun is called Enceladus and that is a name that was actually suggested by a member of my Discord server called Saturn. And I really like this name because Enceladus is the name of one of the moons of the planet Saturn and of course Saturn is the name of the rockets used in the real life Apollo program to of course send astronauts to the moon. So the core stage of Enceladus has um, the core stage of Enceladus, sorry, has nine Merlin 1A engines, I believe, uh, and they provide about one and a half mega newtons of thrust. And uh, this rocket does have a much, much higher thrust rate ratio than a lot of my previous rockets, so it gets off to a much quicker start, and it's also more efficient because you're losing much less delta V to gravity. Once again, I am using Mech Jeb to perform a nice smooth gravity turn here. And uh, like I've said previously in this series, I would highly recommend it if you want to be able to launch rockets more precisely. If you don't want to use it, that's fine, I can understand why. But uh, coming up right here after just two minutes, our core stage is going to fully deplete its fuel. And we'll be able to detach it and fire up that upper stage, which I think that's the Merlin 1C vacuum engine if I remember correctly. It's definitely not a 1D but it has more than enough thrust still to put this thing into orbit. Um, and we can also, now that we're out of the lower parts of the atmosphere, we can jettison our launch escape tower and also our fairing to reveal our entire spacecraft in all of its glory. And again, I've let members of my Discord server name the modules. So we've got the Saturn Command module named after Saturn and the Duck Lander named after a member called an old duck. And I promise, my viewers aren't super egotistical, but anyway, we've completed, uh, well, once we've completed an orbit around Kerbin, our upper stage engine is going to fire one more time to perform our trans Mun injection burn. And it's a pretty typical one, so it's going to cost around 860 meters per second of delta V, and it's going to last about a minute and a half. Um, obviously, I'm not going to show the entire 90 second burn because that's just not going to fit in this video. Um, well, it would, but it's not, it's going to take a long time. But anyway, just like the Apollo missions, we're going to separate our command module from the rest of the spacecraft, and we're going to turn it around and do a docking maneuver. Um, and that this means that we can use our command module's engine to carry around the entire spacecraft, uh, since our upper stage has fully run out of fuel. But as you can see here, we do have a really cool shot using the IVA view from inside the crew capsule, and. In my opinion, that just looks really, really cool. But once we have docked, all we have to do is detach our spacecraft from the upper stage. And um, I am currently on a collision course with the Mun, so we would also have to correct that, but that's pretty much it. Now we're on our way to the Mun. Alright, so after around a day of waiting, our crew have finally arrived at the Mun. Although don't get too excited just yet because they still have to perform another 90 second burn at Mun Periapsis to capture into a low Mun orbit. I've gone for around 15 kilometers here for my orbit because it's a nice balance between not being so high that the lander can't reach the command module, but not so low that you don't have any space for rendezvous maneuvers. After the burn is complete, Bill is going to be the first one to set a new record, being the first Kerbal to perform a spacewalk in orbit of the Mun. Of course, we're doing this for the juicy EVA report science. But talking of setting new records, it's Jebediah's time to shine. After boarding the lander and dropping his periapsis above the targeted landing site to about six or so kilometers, he can begin his daring descent to the surface of the Mun. Now, my targeted landing site is the Highlands just uh, to the northwest of the east crater. And I chose this because its high elevation means that there aren't too many terrain obstacles preventing a nice easy landing and takeoff. And speaking of landing, Jeb is now less than a uh, kilometer away, or less than two kilometers away from the surface of the Mun. And uh, I did play this landing very, very safe, considering I do actually have plans to return uh, from the Mun. 
And of course, we're going for a nice slow touchdown speed of just under two meters per second coming up here in a moment. And here we go, coming in for the final approach. And there we go. The duck has landed. Now, of course, it's time for Jeb to climb down the ladder, the ladder and deliver his one small step for Kerbal Speech and all, all of that. And uh, we can also assert our dominance on the Kraken by planting a flag. And uh, I also decided to go and pick up a Munstone for a bit of extra science. And uh, you'll also notice that I tried to set up a ground station using some of the ground deployed equipment. But I made a big mistake and packed an extra like control station instead of a Mist Regu observation thing. So yeah, no extra science. And also the lander was not how Jeb had left it, which was slightly worrying, but the RCS was actually enough to get that thing upright. So yeah. So here I am just waiting for a good opportunity to launch. And generally you want the command module to be directly overhead. But with the ladder uh, retracted and seatbelts fastened, it's time to launch. Now the Delta V budget for the launch is lower than it is for the landing, uh, but that's actually fine for me because I, I would say I'm a lot better at launches than I am at landing. And since we are already at quite a high elevation, we can pretty much fly flat and we can reach orbital velocity at less than a kilometer above the Mun surface. And it's a good thing Jeb is a bit of a brave lad because that honestly looks pretty terrifying if you ask me. But anyway, after just a few orbits, Jeb had met up with the command module and it was time to see if Jeb could still remember how to dock and spoiler alert, Jeb's definitely got the muscle memory down. Now Jeb, all, all he has to do is squeeze through that miniature sized docking port. Yeah, I don't know how they do that. They must have some shape shifting powers or something. And uh, we have, are of course uh, ditching that lander for the return home because A, it does save weight and B, um, it would not survive re-entry anyway. And that's a really cool shot in my opinion because we're doing our escape burn right as Kerbin's shadow moves over the Mun. And uh, we can see our capsule kind of just gets swallowed by by the shadow of the of Kerbin. Again, it's another one day journey to get back to Kerbin. And uh, after that, we will be screaming into the atmosphere at three kilometers per second. And um, it's not too fast, nothing that um, we can't handle. But as you can see, our service module does get completely demolished by the atmospheric heating but yeah luckily our engineers actually remembered a heat shield for the crew capsule and in fact that the engineers are on a roll here because they also remembered parachutes and uh of course the parachutes are enough to slow down our capsules to just a few meters per second for splashdown and our kerbals after three days of space travel will finally be able to return home So guys, that is going to do it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment, all of that good generic YouTube stuff. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to my Discord server in the description. Join that if you want or don't, it's up to you. But anyway, thanks for watching. And until next time, have a great rest of your day.